Well, good morning, y'all, and welcome back to my kitchen. I'm going to cook up some good stuff today, and I'm going to try to make several videos, <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. Uh, tomorrow, which is Tuesday, my husband has an appointment with the cardiologist. He's been having a few issues when he exerts himself. He gets a little bit out of breath. So, anyway, we're going to the doctor, and depending on what we find out, I may not be here to, you know, if he has to have some tests, I may not be here. So, I'm going to try to get some ahead, but if there's a day that there is no video, don't run away on me, I'll be back. I don't know what we're looking at. So, that's just an FYI. I hope everything's fine, and he does have a pacemaker defibrillator, and maybe they just need to up his pacemaker. I don't know. But anyhow, um, we'll see what we find out. But just to let y'all know, if I'm not here, that's probably what's going on. But today, remember I told y'all my mom cooked, uh, she called it cooking for the public, baking for the public. And she always made the gingerbread that one of our banks in town would serve during the holidays. They served gingerbread and wassail. <clears throat> She'd make a huge, like a... 24 inch square pan and cut it little one inch pieces and that's how they served it with wassail but today I'm going to make it in a 9 by 13 and I have already sprayed it with Baker's Joy now you can use Crisco and flour to, to grease and flour your pan if you want to or lard whatever but I found Baker's Joy and oh my goodness I love it it is uh, in a can like your Pam but it has the flour mixed with it so I'm going to get the camera over to the mixer where y'all can watch me mix up this gingerbread and then my house is going to smell heavenly and we're going to have a good treat that's not just syrupy sweet but it's good and uh, it makes you feel like it's fall because it has the smells of the fall and all the spices. If you make the recipe let me know what you think about it. It's been in our family since Probably 1965 at least, mother started baking <clears throat> for the bank. So, uh, and for those in the Cleveland area, back then it was former State Bank. It has a new name now. I don't even know what its name is. But anyway, come on over to the mixer and see if you can learn how to make gingerbread. Okay, I'm glad y'all just moseyed on over to the mixer with me. I've got two sticks of butter in my... Uh, mixer and I'm going to mix that a bit then I'm going to add a cup of sugar and two eggs my butter's been out a while so it's nice and soft there's my cup of sugar I'm going to cream that really well down and I'm going to add two eggs and I'm going to mix those really well and then I'm going to add three-fourths of a cup of dark syrup you can use dark Cairo mother liked to use uh, cane syrup. So I bought a little bitty bottle of it to use. But you can use dark Cairo if you want to or dark corn syrup. Okay, I'm going to get my corn syrup in or my uh, dark syrup. Mine's not corn syrup. And that's three-fourths of a cup of the syrup. I'm going to mix it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add is my spices. A teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of cloves, two teaspoons of ginger, and one half teaspoon of salt. Okay. 
I'm going to add three cups of flour and a half a cup of buttermilk. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to mix, we're going to pour a half cup of boiling water over two teaspoons of soda and add that in and uh, beat it till it's smooth and it'll be ready to put into the oven. I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit, making sure everything gets incorporated. Okay, I'm going to add my flour a little bit at a time and then I'll alternate my buttermilk in. Well, put it down another notch. Half cup of buttermilk. I'm going to add the rest of the flour. Turn my tea kettle on where it'll start getting the water boiling to put into the soda. Using my electric tea kettle, it sure comes in handy. Okay, my water's boiling. And I'm just going to pour it over the soda. Did y'all see it foam up a little bit? So just a jiffy and I'll get that in there. Let me stir it here. Make sure, it, oh it just foams. Make sure it all dissolves. And while it's hot, you don't have to let it cool. You go ahead and mix it into your batter and mix it all until it's very smooth. Okay, it's nice and smooth, so I'm going to get the bowl back over to the booze block and we'll get it in the pan and bake us some gingerbread. Okay, let's get it in the pan here, folks. It's so smooth and pretty and I'm like a kid. I have to taste of it and it just tastes so good. Those of you that have never made gingerbread and your concept of gingerbread is the gingerbread boy cookies, this is a, a cake type gingerbread that's just wonderful. You could do this in, in like muffin cups. I don't know how many it would make. Probably at least 12. I'm going to get it into a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. Hey y'all, here's my gingerbread cut and on my little serving plate with my cup of tea. I'm going to enjoy that here in a minute. <clears throat> it makes a nice tall pan of gingerbread and it's so um, light and it's not it's good y'all need to try this recipe my mom approved it for many years so it's definitely tried and proven one you need to add to your recipe box y'all I wish you could smell it in my kitchen it smells wonderful it smells like Santa Claus's workroom or something hope y'all enjoy this recipe and make it and let me know what you think about it it's so good and it's wonderful with just a cup of hot tea or coffee um, or wassail if you want to make some then you can really celebrate this would be a good thing to have made for like Christmas morning or during Thanksgiving uh, it's not heavy it's not real sweet I only had a cup of sugar to the whole thing had the syrup in it 
but it's not overly sweet. So it's good for just a little bit of something when you need a bite of something and it's not meal time yet or just a light dessert. Let me know what you think about it. Get your little recipe book out and uh, copy down the recipe. Now I made two copies and I'm going to go ahead and post both of them. One is where I wrote down and it's dated with the year when I got it from Mama. And the other one is one of the copies of her recipes that when she submitted this recipe to the Southern Living Magazine, if they posted and used your recipe, they would send you, I think it was six copies printed, like that little card. And um, so I wanted to show you all a picture of her card. She had several recipes printed. And uh, she was always tickled to death when she'd get that little envelope with her recipes from Southern Living. So, we've been Southern Living Magazine fans for many, many years. So, I hope y'all will put this one in your box and that you will enjoy it and use it. It's If you make it in a thinner pan, of course, you're going to get more pieces and it'll be thinner. But I just did it in the 9 by 13 today. Y'all uh, get your supper planned. Feed those kiddos and that honey and whoever's around that would have hunger pains, you need to take care of that. Make some memories around the table. I hope y'all are planning a joyous Thanksgiving and uh, the Christmas holidays. It's just a time for family and for celebration and getting together. I wish my kids all lived closer where we could just, you know, get together more often and share our meals together. That's one of the happiest times of my life is when my kids are gathered at my table. From the time I married in 1970, I had family gatherings at my house. We had a little round table. We had a beautiful new mobile home that we bought. And uh, it had a little round table. But let me tell you what, that table was full of food. And I, I always had people over after church. We fed the pastor and the evangelist. and. And we would have Mama's birthday and Daddy's birthday. And, and, and we just had a house full. You just had to shuffle around and fill your plate and go find a place to sit down. But we had, you know, we made memories. And that's what it's all about. Y'all need to make memories. Because sometimes when I'm feeling lonesome, I can think back over all those happy times. And I'll say, Troy, you remember, blah, blah, blah. And then we, man, we can remember some fun times. Make some fun memories that you can reflect back on. Because you know what? You might be a lot younger than me, but one of these days you're going to be as old as me if you live. And you're going to need some memories to look back on. Y'all have a blessed day. Come back here tomorrow and we'll learn something new. I hope I'm here every day, but remember what I said at the beginning of the video. It just depends on what the doctor says about Troy. So we'll play it by ear. I may have to maybe just stretch my videos that I have made out to every other day. But just watch, tap that bell, and they'll notify you when one's uploaded. And um, I'm here to stay. I just might hit and miss here in the next few days. I just don't know. The Lord bless y'all, and I'll see you again.